I just was so physically and mentally exhausted and candidly just didn't have the energy to start another business. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out what the next stage of life for me had been. My financial resources had pretty much depleted by then yeah. um, because I couldn't work. I was unraveling properties and things. And I just got to talking to a friend of mine, Tony Calico, my best friend, uh, who has been a missionary to the, the Roma, the gypsies in Romania for 20 years. Wow. And Tony's from upstate New York. He's lived in Orlando for 20 years at the time. And, you know, he said, you're like a, a walking tour guide. Every time we're driving around, you're like, you know, the Beefy King is as old as you. And here that used to be the T.G. Lee Dairy. And he said, you know, why don't you find a community right here in Orange County and try to make a difference? Wow. And so that's how I ended up considering Bithlow because very unscientifically in that conversation, I thought, where's the worst uh, reputation in town? I think we'll start there. Wow. And Pine Hills popped into my head as being Crime Hills, right. all I've known of it. And then Bithlow popped into my head as being the nightmare before Christmas, yeah. the next town east of Bithlow being Christmas, Florida. So right. I, I, again, instant analysis said, well, I'd heard about a lot of landscaping and painting and different projects over the years happening at Pine Hills. Right. I'd never heard about anything happening in Bithlow on the news or otherwise. So I just took a drive out there. Tony mentioned that we knew a pastor that was uh, pastoring a little church in Bithlow that I didn't even know this guy. I hadn't seen him in 20 years, was even a pastor at all. But it turned out he lived in Winter Park, was driving out every weekend to pastor this church of six or eight elderly folks. So I met with Pastor Frank. I started to talk to him about what, what the issues were. Yeah. And what did you find? When you went to Bithlow, what were the problems? Well, I mean, the things that he told me blew me away. I mean, he would tell me that... When you wash your white shirts, they turn orange um, due to the high iron content. He told me about um, almost no single-family homes in the community of almost 10,000 people. They were mostly all trailers, many of them decades old, which create their own sense of series of problems right. with mold and mildew and termites and other things. No street lights, almost no sidewalks. No safe passage across this bridge over the Econ River. So no, just a lack of infrastructure. Everything. Well, and, and to take it a step further, I mean, no doctor's office in Bithlow's history. So literally no place to go. And how many people living in Bithlow? Well, at the time, the 2010 census put it at about 8,300. I okay. think it's more like about 10,000 now. So you go out and find this community that just is lacking all the necessary infrastructure for healthy. Yeah, so the takeaway for me was all these problems are very complicated, but they're all solvable. No one had been working to solve them. So we just put together a plan. In fact, I we did a quick... You know, I was sitting having coffee in College Park thinking, you know, why am I sitting here having coffee not concerned about my environment? Just, this is just a nice community. And what makes this community different from the Bithlow community where you're sitting there and you just know things aren't in place? Right, right. And so we started with seven key areas that really need to be in place in all communities, healthcare, education, transportation, housing, basic needs, building a sense of community, the environment. Um, and we just said, hey, we're going to address all these things simultaneously. So you see it and you just start. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know at the time that there's a whole business around <laughs> community work. And these are called the determinants of health. And the reality is these are just common sense. 